field where I generally find a lot of pennies and of different different periods and artifacts and a bit of silver and all sorts of things and uh, I was just sort of nearing the uh, gate thinking it's time to go home and the machine made a, a high digit number which reads a kind of silver silver level I thought better dig this so um, I dug the, uh, the the sod out and at the bottom was this beautiful brooch now I didn't know at the time what it was until my other expert friends said you know what you've got there no it's a first world war sweetheart brooch so when you saw the name james how did you then go detective well obviously the good thing about these books all of these brooches don't have names on so we could we know by by contacting the farmer which is a friend of mine his previous people who owned the field that it was mentioned to me uh, where they were the, must have lost it so I just contacted the farmer we met up with the with uh, Lucy who, whose family it was and then informed her that we found a brooch that belongs to her family she was ecstatic she was really ecstatic and how, how was it for you because it must be very rare that you find something that has a historical link a very personal historical link to somebody well for me extremely exciting and the reason being is because to actually find something and to hand it back to the family is the most precious thing that you can do for a family and i, I couldn't wait to present it to back to their family after 110 years of being in the ground i think which which is makes more um more of a uh, significance than than just just finding something that that, that you can't find the owners so it was a great historical history family find. And what, what you know, did, as a detectorist, what do you enjoy, enjoy about detecting? I like to find all the history uh, and uh, it's, it's a knowledge. You're playing detective all the time, finding historical artifacts, finding out what they were used for uh, and educating people on my YouTube channel which explains what these items were for and going back in time uh, explain the dates of these of the periods that these artifacts and coins were used so let's go back in time for the brooch the man that that bought the brooch may well have been heading off to the first world war exactly and he bought it to his for his sweetheart exactly he brought it as a as a memory to his loved one to remind them that it was going fighting the door haven't forgotten as a memory to that bro to remind them that they have the love for them even though they're far apart brilliant thank you so, mark why do you allow these detectorists on your land uh there's quite a few approached me in the past years and yeah john's a good friend of mine he's been coming on about five years and it's just really the history behind what they find and john's really good in the respect that it brings things to me to see and explains it. I've learned a hell of a lot about history. You know, he's really honest, is John, with the way a lot of detectives, as you can imagine, if they found something valuable, we are on a deal to split, but they don't necessarily need to tell me they've found it. But John, you know, he's a good, honest detective, so he's the main one who comes on all the time now, so. Oh, and he he came to you with the brooch. Yes. And how and how did you work out who it belonged to? It was quite easy in a respect that I knew who had this field in the First World War period when the brooch was obviously presented to Jane. But um, so I just said to John, I knew Lucy was related somehow to the can well I knew she was related to the cannons, but I didn't know how to Jane. And then as soon as we approached Lucy, she she was straight on it, knowing who it was, so...
wanted to present this beautiful brooch, First World War, sweetheart brooch, back to your family, we'll say. What a memory, fantastic. It was probably 118 years ago since they lost it, and I bet it was heartbreaking when they did. But I've had it all cleaned up, ready to present back to you, so more than likely you probably get back to your family, to your, to your loved one. So tell us a bit about the person that's lost it, which is, I think, I believe is your great aunt. Uh, it is. Thank you so much, John. Um, my great aunt Jane, or as I knew her, my auntie Jane, I, uh, she was my granddad's sister. We formed generations at Shellfield. Um, a girl working in the fields on a farm near Burnley dropped her prized possession, a brooch inscribed with her name, Jane, given to her as a parting gift by her soldier sweetheart. Well now, thanks to a metal detector, it has been found, and today the precious brooch was handed back to her family, Lindsay Prosser reports. Well, it gives me great pleasure to present this beautiful brooch. After 110 years, a silver brooch is returned to the family of the owner. Thank you so much, John. You see, when you see that brooch now, how does that make you feel? A very warm inside, um, to think of the history of it to think it's been there all that time and now it's been found. The brooch has the name Jane inscribed on it and was given to Jane Cannon by her sweetheart Arthur Brown as he was leaving for the First World War. He must have worked very hard and saved very hard to, to get that and then to give it to her. And yeah, she'll have lost it and I'd imagine looked high and low for it. But it's quite a, a big area really to cover. It was common for soldiers heading off to war to give sweetheart brooches to their wives and girlfriends. Jane's was found by a detectorist in this field. I was just sort of nearing the uh, gate thinking it's time to go home and the machine made a, a high digit number which reads a kind of silver, silver level. I thought better dig this. At the bottom was this beautiful brooch. During the First World War, the field was farmed by Jane's family, and she would have worked the land like many women did. Yeah, take that out. Well, look at that. Wow. The farmer who now owns the field knew that the Cannon family ran the farm during the First World War and had a daughter called Jane, and her relatives still live locally. When John brought it, I just felt so bad on Jane who'd lost it, you know, having it presented to her than losing it. You can just imagine her working her socks off and then getting home at night and she's lost the brooch and so it is all history coming alive, isn't it? Jay may have lost Arthur's gift, but their love endured. It's even nicer that they got married. So there was the happy ending that he came back and, and they were reunited and, and went on to get married and have children. Lindsay Prosser, BBC Northwest tonight. Thank goodness, you know, it was a happy ending, wasn't it? Because they ended up marrying, but it's great.